change. So we have 3,000 pages of questions. Not all as complicated as this, but, but a whole lot of stuff. Okay? So how do we use it? Oh, no, here's one more example. This is a, an equilibrium problem, and here um, they're going to choose the form of the reaction quotient or equilibrium constant. I actually prefer it to be called the reaction quotient. And then they can fill, choose the uh, numerator and the denominator and so on, and then go ahead and fill in the sort of commonly common approach to these is using this so-called ice table where they fill in the initial and they of course know this one, this one, and this one initially. And then as those are filled in, I can go um, give up, give up, give up, give up. Then they start filling in the, the next bits, okay? So they're led through doing the problem in the way in which we would expect them to do it on pen and paper. So it's meant to be a bridge between reading about it, hearing about it in lectures, and then actually doing the problems on pen and paper. Okay, now how do we get usage? Use, achieving usage is an absolute major. Um, and uh, what we found that customized content was important. Best choice is open access. Um, but despite that, where the major users are the people from whom we've created customized content. We had 8,000 active users. That means 8,000 users who entered 80 or more marks on about 20 pages in 2007. The University of Auckland was 36% of the users. New Zealand high schools were 42% of the users. Canterbury used about 2%. Uh, that was by far the most usage of any other New Zealand university. Um, and then we have international users be, um, due to funding from the Royal Society of Chemistry in the UK. In 2007, the high, New Ze uh, UK high school students came in and they were, they were about 20%. Now these ratios have cha are changing a bit in, um, in, um, in 2008. But at least gives you the idea that this adds up to about 98%. And people don't really come in and play around on these things if they can't find easily the thing, the, um, the module, which is going to help them on their exam tomorrow. You know, they really want to have know that they're accessing stuff and working through exercises that are relevant to what their course is. Okay? Now, that, so that's the sort of global usage thing. But now getting back to the University of Auckland, which is where this originated, how do we achieve usage in a, in a local sense? Uh, Best Choice went live in about 2003. It's progressed enormously since then. But um, we had one, one lecturer who was very keen from the beginning. And um, he got kids using it in the in second semester courses and gave them a real fluffy thing like they had to do any six modules and they'd get five marks. And they all did it at the end and they didn't take advantage of the learning opportunities that Best Choice offers. Um, since then, as you can see, I've had uh, a, number, a number of other of uh, my colleagues come on with other courses, but I'll just point out the, the next the next big development here was here we started using it in our big uh, course that it's equivalent to the Otago one that you talked about for pre-labs. And um, the pre-labs started out uh, for Chem 110 and then the Chem 110 people came on with assignments and then the Chem 120 people came on with pre-labs and so the whole thing has gone backwards and forwards to the point where now in all of these five courses and a couple more that I haven't put here, we have both pre-labs and um, assignments being used. And we even reached the dizzy heights of getting into a second-year paper this year, um, very, which was a very successful um, trial. Now, the pre-labs that we do, we get them to do the exercise. And then this is the, the way we do this, is the way that this lady here uh, Dr. Judy Britton suggested we do it at the beginning, and I thought it was a bit strange, but I said, okay, off we go. And it was that they have a module, and they're given the, um, they're, they're told they have to do this prior to the lab. 
And Judy wanted to do it so that they had to turn in the last page of the module to the, to the lab supervisor as proof that they'd done it. And I thought, gee, they're just going to go right to the last page and do it and hand it in. And, you know, they're not going to do the whole module. There's going to be significant numbers who aren't even going to bother with the first. But it turns out everybody starts at the beginning and they go right through. <laughs> and what's even more astounding, to what, even, what surprised me even more, was, was these assignments here, which, of course, they have to assign, complete by a particular due date. We get recent, we got good, good completions on those, but in the early days, they completed the pre-labs to a greater degree than they created the, completed the assignments. Because I think the pre-labs, you had to turn into a piece of paper to somebody, and, and somebody was going to pay attention and say to you, naughty boy, if you hadn't done it correctly. And, and whereas the assignments, you know, it was just a big anonymous thing. And so the pre-labs, I mean, the two types of uh, use that have really supplemented one another, and, um, and it's built up incredibly. I mean, now, if you add these numbers and those numbers, you'll see that most courses are doing about 750 clicks, you know.